Welcome to my vlog on big data and cybersecurity. My name is Libyao Lim. I'm a computer scientist, an educator, and a software engineer. Now, in the last two episodes, I've showed you the cool things you could do with graphs and graph data models and graph analytics. Now, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to map your data into a graph data model. And this is where the magic happens. This is where you map your data to graph data models, and that graph data models will unlock uh, the magic in your data. So this is something you need to think about and in what, is, what are the kinds of uh, analytics you want to do on your graph data. And this will help you to figure out uh, the exact type of edges that you want to extract out of your source data. But let's dive right in. So um, what do I mean by graph data model? I'm going to encode the graph using edges. So I'm going to keep a table of edges. And the edge is essentially a subject, predicate, and an object. Uh, a subject could be Libya Lim, a uh, predicate could be users, an object could be an IP address, for example. Now, when we actually store this in the relational database or in a data lake, um, we actually slap on extra fields like event timestamp, um, the source rate, if you want to, to link it back to your raw data. Uh, the subject is actually not a single field, but uh, three fields in this case, encoding the type, the ID, and the name. Uh, very similar for the object and the predicate too. Uh, I'm using predicate and pred status. Pred status encodes um, the, the status of operations, like if it's a DNS request, whether it succeeded or not, for example. And I'm going to show you how I did it for uh, the Okta logs. Um, and again, this is my workflow. I'm showing it uh, as a reference for you. Uh, you can take it and actually modify it however you want, uh, make that workflow yours, make it something that will work for you. So let's go. Uh, let's take a look at the data. I'm going to do this only for a particular event type. And this is for raw.event type um, equals to basically user authentication auth via MFA event type. And taking a quick look at the Okta data, you can see that, hey, it's actually a pretty complicated um, JSON. Um, and what I typically do is I would actually pretty print it, uh, pretty print one particular uh, raw JSON here. Um, and then uh, sometimes um, you would, I would actually put this in a uh, editor like VS Code um, that will actually pretty print this and also syntax highlight this, uh, makes it a bit easier on the eyes. Uh, but this is a, a octa long and section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract um, possibly multiple edges out of this uh, log. And I would make the actor the subject. And then I will extract different pieces of information associated with the actor from this log. So uh, for example, the first piece of information would be, hey, this actor uses a particular IP address. And this is in the client section of the Okta log. Uh, the most complicated piece that I will talk about would be how to uh, extract edges from the target section. You see target is an array of objects uh, within the Okta log. And we want to create an edge for each uh, member of this array. So I'll show you that in a little bit. So let's go with a simple case. This is extracting one source row to one target edge. Um, extremely easy. And I would play with this. I would just extract well, the event timestamp, the row ID, um, and then start extracting the subject. And I'll build this out slowly. Um, and every time I build, build it out, I would actually execute it to make sure that it conforms to the shape that I expect. So this is a tight uh, uh, test and development loop, uh, which I really uh, like very much. So I'll keep doing this until the output looks reasonable, in which case then it's time to move on. Now, the next type of extraction would be a one-to-many extraction, meaning one source row to multiple edges with the same subject. In this case, I'm going to use a pattern. I'm calling it the inline array struct pattern. Uh, again, you could use explode as well. I just choose it to do it this way. So I'll use inline, and I'll give inline an array. And I'll construct the array out of a series of structs. I'm just going to do one for now just to demonstrate it. Uh, and in this case, I'm just transforming the previous query into this particular format and framework. And so if I then um, 
execute this, I see, hey, I get back exactly the same output as before. So that's great. Um, this is like a this uh, this is like a unit test, if you will. Now let's extend this. Let's extend it with a second edge that will encode the geolocation of the client as well. Uh, so our very easy, just add an additional struct to the array constructor. And with the struct, you just pull out any the fields that you want. In this case, it would be just city state um, and other geographical information. If I'm doing concatenation of the um, city, state, and country uh, for the uh, for the object name portion of the edge. I'm using located at as the predicate and null as the pred status. Uh, and for all of the inline, you map them to object type, object ID, object name, pred, pred status. So you will tweak this, you'll keep running this, uh, and you keep checking the results until you find something that works, that is what you expect. So this was for edges that you statically construct um, when you're at development time, at coding time. What if there's an array in the JSON, like the target array, and we want to create an edge for each array element? So then the logic for creating the edges is not determined at development time, it's determined at query execution time. So here we have to use high order functions. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did it for that target array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract columns from each of the array elements. Um, and so I get an array of columns, and then I will stitch those arrays together to get an array of records. I'll add additional fields, I'll filter rows in order to get the array that I really want. So to extract the array of records that we want, I use from JSON with um, this raw target uh, colon star, colon star will get me all the rows, and I'll specify the columns that I want to extract. And I check the results. That looks exactly like what I expected. Um, and then I'll stitch the fields back by using an array zip, right, with uh, the three arrays. So I get back um, a struct of the three arrays, three fields, I'm sorry. Now we want to add some extra fields to each struct. Here we use something analogous to map in MapReduce. It's called transform here, and you give it a function that will do the actual mapping. I'm adding the predicate name and the predicate status, and you can see you can use any SQL expression in the uh, in, in these fields. Again, you run it and you test it, and it looks reasonable, and so you keep going. Uh, now we use inline to turn that array of structs into rows. So Slap on the inline, check the results. That looks reasonable, except that, hey, uh, some of these, the user object type, I don't really care for that. Um, we, we already encoded that in the, uh, the first edge that we showed you. So let's filter those out. We use the filter function, and you specify a filtering condition here, um, and you use that to filter those out. Executing that, you see that, hey, I did filter out all the uh, user object type. Now we are almost ready to put it together. Uh, we just slap on uh, the, the the metadata, event TS, the read, and the subject uh, with the, the query that we developed, and voila, we have um, the edges that we want to extract out of each uh, octa uh, log record. And this is only for one event type. You have to repeat this for all the different event types that you're going to see, right? Um, so again, this is my process. Uh, I hope it gives you an insight into how you can do this yourself. Uh, again, make this your own. Uh, and again, this is where the magic happens. See you next time.